Welcome to my EQS electric channel. Electric cars are very special. The main difference to fossil cars are their, well, very low energy content in the battery and the silence of the motor and the resulting comfortable ride. In this video, I will show you the first measurements of the consumption of my EQS 450 plus in normal operations on the German autobahns. I will provide four different consumption figures. So this channel is viewed by, well, people all around the world with different uh, measurements they use for the consumption of cars. And I have four different ones, which I have to tell you here. Three of them I will use regularly, but the fourth one, no, not at all. So first is watt hours per kilometer. This is what Tesla, as the market leader and as the first big EV manufacturer provides in all countries, which use the metric system. The metric system is used by scientists and therefore you do not have to have these weird conversions of units. Well, there is one conversion. We use uh, watt hours and not joule for the energy content. A joule is a watt second and uh, an hour contains or has 3,600 seconds. So there is this conversion by 3,600, but that's the only one. The second measurement is what hours per mile, and that is what Tesla uses for all the countries which aren't going metric, but still use the miles like the USA. The third is kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer, and that's a weird number, and that's used by the German car manufacturers, yeah, well, as Mercedes is one. And why should we use a base of 100 kilometers? What makes those 100 kilometers attractive? Mm. This is history um, and a reminiscence to fossil cars. In consumption in liters would be fractions if you look at the consumption on a single kilometer. So people said, well, let's multiply by 100 and then you see differences between those cars and you will have three liters per 100 kilometers for a very small car or 25 for a very big one. So a multiplication by 100 brought the amounts of consumption to figures which one could yeah, read and handle. The fourth one is a a figure from the US, from the administration, whereas from people use in fossil cars the miles per gallon. That's a quite a good figure. Um, you fill up your gas tank with 20 gallons and just multiply your uh, miles per gallon figure with these 20 gallons and you have your range. That's a simple mental arithmetics just a multiplication. If you have Europeans liters per kilometer or a hundred kilometer, and then you will like to, or would like to calculate your range, you have to make a division in mental arithmetics. Mm, that's not possible for a lot of people there. So uh, they invented <laughs> the computer, the range computer in the cars for that. Yeah. But change this to kilowatt hours, miles per kilowatt hours. This will lead to small figures. Variations would be only recognizable in the decimals. All cars look as if they use or consume the same amount of energy on a mile. Therefore, the EPA, the administration, introduced a figure called miles per gallon gasoline equivalent, MPGE. That's completely nonsense. The definition is 100 miles divided by a consumption of 33.7 kilowatt hours equals 100 MPGE. Yeah, the idea behind that is, well, you might compare these MPGs between electric cars and fossil cars, but it's nonsense. Where you set your, your point why 33.7? Were there uh, lobbyists placing this 33.7 to promote their fossil cars? Mm. So 
I don't see any point why 33.7 would be better than 35 or 40 or 50. Hmm. No idea. Tja, I will not use this figure very often, probably just once in this video and then I forgot about that. Before we start the measurement of the data, we have to control the odometer. Uh, why? Well, if your car reports a too short distance, then the consumption might appear too high. So you have to check out if your odometer reports the right distance. My wife and I traveled through southern Germany from the southernmost point of Lake Starnberg in the south of Munich, Bavaria, to a place near Ulm. This is the westernmost or one of the westernmost cities of Bavaria. And uh, we started at whiskey.com, uh, where fine spirits meet, our internet portal for the connoisseur. And we traveled to Ulm and we traveled to a museum of model making, children toys, model railroads. And the company is called Märklin. And this Märklin was founded in the 19th century. So very old company, very bright history. And so they opened this museum quite recently and we decided to travel there. My wife also took the pictures of the screen. So uh, she had to lean over, forgive her if the pictures are not that uh, rectangular as you expect them to be. I'm still configuring the video equipment of my car and in the upcoming weeks, I think I will have the first videos taken out of my car. So to have a comparison between the distance measured in the car and the reality is Google Maps. They have quite a very, yeah, exact model of the world in the Google Maps. And that's quite accurate. And they reported 177 kilometers, but the car with its 21 inch wheels reported only 174. This is 1.7% too few. And therefore the consumption figure appears too high. We therefore have to reduce the consumption about this 1.7% and instead of the indicated 22.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer, the car needed just 22.2. That's well, a good figure in my personal view. Uh, to convert it into the other systems, it's 222 watt hours per kilometer or 357 watt hours per mile or 106 MPGE, miles per gallon gasoline equivalent. Blah. Yeah, 90% of the way, uh, exactly 88% of the way, we traveled at the official recommended autobahn speed, which is 130 kilometers per hour or the equivalent 81 miles per hour. That's for Germany quite a low number internationally, where all those speed limits apply, it's quite a high number. But we had to pass the Bavarian capital of Munich and that reduced our average speed to 109 kilometers per hour or 67.7 miles per hour. But don't try to estimate the range of your car by this average over that trip, mixed trip with mixed speed. Because this 12% uh, city traffic, city bypass traffic uh, is done or was done by very low speeds around 50, 60, 70 kilometers per hour. And with these speeds, the consumption is a lot less. Yeah. But did we really travel that fast? We all know that the speedometers of cars have to overestimate the speed you're, uh, you're having due to safety reasons. Otherwise, the manufacturer would may be held responsible for accidents because the car had been faster than indicated. So we have to check that. And how to do this? Well, we, I have a GPS system on my mobile phone and there you can see exact speeds in the start. Uh, there is a, uh, a change around the mean speed, but after a few seconds, half a minute, those figures are quite stable. And the GPS reported a less speed than was indicated on the dashboard. Yeah. And my EQS reported three kilometers per hour less at 130. 
that's two miles per hour less. So the real speed had been 127 kilometers per hour or 79 miles per hour. That's not, that's quite a big difference. The Tesla had been one, one and a half kilometers per hour in difference, just half of that. And at lower speeds, the difference is less. So it's two kilometers per hour at 90 or 1.5 miles per hour at 56. That's a difference about 2.3%. Oh, these values may differ to your car, even if you have an EQS for 50 plus with those 21 inch wheels. Why? Well, there are uh, differences in tire pressure, in wear of your wheels, of the rubber of the wheels. And the higher the pressure in your wheels are, uh, the less and the smaller the footprint uh, of the wheel on the road uh, would be and the bigger the radius of the, of the wheel would be. Five millimeters less in profile, that's a fifth of an inch, uh, would result in 1.5% speed difference, which would be indicated. Yeah, so this will lead to a higher indicated speed because the wear reduces the diameter and the, uh, the wheel has to turn more often to reach a given distance. I'm driving electric cars since 2013. My first had been a Tesla Model S 85 and I talked a lot to different people deep into the business and it became clear that there is still some unknown facts to the public that uh, there is some, well, it's good if you run in your car. Four years ago, when I worked at Opel, the German subsidiary of General Motors, there was a typical range of 2000 kilometers, 1240 miles to run in your car. You need a different oil to take up all the wear from the uh, from the gearboxes, from the tooth of the uh, gear or from the bearings. And after those 2000 kilometers, you changed your oil, got rid of the wear in the oil, uh, got the normal oil in it, and then you were good to go for every speed and power you would like to have. Today, all of the surfaces are finished much better. And the steel is harder and the bearings are more precise, but there's still a fresh roughness very little on the in the gears and in the bearings and I still keep to the run-in procedure and I was told so to do so because it makes a difference if you intend to drive your car for a very long time. So 300,000 kilometers or 200,000 miles is no problem for an electric car even if you have a heavy foot from the start. but. Uh, driving twice or three times that much in a car, that makes a difference. You have to run in your car. So I'm still in the process of running in my car. And that means I do not uh, take more than 50% of the power of the car. And I do not travel faster than 130 kilometers per hour. And the average consumption therefore will rise over the next time. <laughs> I'm at 1500 in the moment kilometers. Uh, in the moment, so roughly a thousand miles. So next week or end of the next weekend, I will pass the 2000 kilometers and then I will look at what the maximum speed is and how high the consumption will be. My typical target speed uh, with the Teslas had been 150 kilometers per hour because it's 93 miles per hour because that was the maximum for the autopilot. And with the Mercedes, uh, there is no limit for these assistant systems. You may put in your autopilot, your lane assist uh, at 210 kilometers per hour with top speed, uh, 130 miles per hour, and it will keep your lane, well, only autobahns, but where else would you travel that fast? No. And in future, I will look at the consumption at these speeds as well. And my maximum average speed with a Tesla over 100 kilometers, 60 miles, had been 222 kilometers per hour, 138 miles per hour, and consumption went up 
over 600 watt hours per kilometer or 960 watt hours per mile. Mm, that's quite a lot. So you can't travel farther than 150 kilometers something and then your battery will be empty. Yeah, we will see how far the EQS will come at those speeds. There's the last parameter in consumption and that is the tire pressure. And I like comfortable cars and the 21 inch wheels are uncomfortable by design. So I run them with minimal pressure of 2.65 bars. That's 38 PSI. And this gives quite a comfortable ride, but leads to a higher consumption. So rising that to three bars or 43 PSI will reduce the consumption significantly. I will do that in the future and uh, we'll see if the trade-off between less consumption and lesser comfort <laughs> is feasible for me. Uh, what do you think? Should I increase the tire pressure? Will that lead to uh, less safety due to longer braking distances? Well, the next video will bring you data about the con consumption at constant speeds and I will have comparison data with my Tesla Model Y which I have tested last week. This will be quite interesting how one of the market leaders, Tesla, will compare to the new built EQS 450 Plus from Mercedes. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come.